when, when you do a film like this, an animated film, how is it different from doing a live action <clears throat> film, let's say? Um, there's a million of notes, maybe more than in a, in a drama. You mentioned King's Speech or these kind of films where there's, of course, not wall-to-wall -wall music. Um, but that's about it, because the rest is, um, is all about uh, following the storyline and trying to show the invisible, bring emotions that maybe are not yet uh, expanded. Um, and, um, and be good. Do you have certain melodies that you attach to a certain character? Are there certain protocols you follow? Uh, my main protocol, I think, on every film I, I, I score is to find the uh, the opening sequence. I've always think that uh, I always think it's crucial when you start scoring to to be to put yourself in the position of the audience that just came out of work or doing something else. They park, they come into the theater, they sit. Lights goes down, and what happens then? So if there's m if there's music in the opening title, it has to to capture the soul of the film, but at the same time capture the attention of the um, audience and draw the attention, draw the emotion of the of the audience right away into what the film will be. Uh, so I spent a lot of time doing that, and by doing that, I found for this example for the script for pets the the main title, main theme that we'll hear all through the film. Um, in different uh, uh, orchestrations. How do you achieve those cer those those uh, sensibilities? For example, in Grand Budapest Hotel, uh, what's so much fun is there's a kind of silliness that is uh, the mood of the whole film, and you know that as a viewer you're going to be taken to a new fanciful plot turn because you're setting it up that way musically, and it's and it's delightful. We we trust you to lead us there as as the viewer. Um, how do you decide that this is the sound of a silly film, this is the sound of, in this case, a very silly film because it's about crazy pets and what they do when we shut the door? Which it is a true story, actually. <laughs> um, well, you know, there's a director there who knows a little bit <laughs> about what he's doing and how the movie should, should sound and what the score can bring. Um, and Chris Renault is very, he keeps saying he's not a musician, but, got a good, but he has a great instinct about how music should work or what it should bring to a scene or how it should link a sequence to another sequence. Um, so we, you know, we, uh, we spend time together and I, I, I provide ideas and uh, because he's very open-minded, he, he's happy to, to find a uh, little gems here and there and we put them together. But very early on we decided that because it's New York, because there was some playfulness playfulness about the, the, the story that we could um, try and get away from a, a pure orchestral score but, and add a, a jazz influence. Um, and uh, there was a long time that I wanted to do that in, a, in an American film. I had another chance to do that to to show my, my, my jazzer skills. Um, so it was very exciting. And exciting also to do uh, an animation which was a, a real uh, strong comedy, very funny. Uh, uh, that reminded me of my love for cartoons um, when I was uh, a teenager, I would say, not a child, because my reference is more about Tex Avery or um, and you know Scott Bradley's scores, which were both extremely virtuoso, um, extremely um, uh, influenced by a classical repertoire, or sometimes by a jazz repertoire, and that played the silliness that you mentioned very, very well. Um, so that that was all these elements together, plus a large orchestra that can open the. The adventure nature of the story um, uh, was the idea that we shared with Chris. Some composers think it's a bad idea to lead the viewer emotionally, and some 
that the old school believe it's a necessity. In the old horror movies, right before someone was about to go into the attic and turn the knob to the door, the, the underscore would go, dun, 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 just to tell us this is really spooky, right? Is that cheating? Is that an old way of doing things? Or is that uh, a device that you use as well? Is it legitimate? Are you quoting Beethoven on purpose, or? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, movie language has evolved through the years like uh, any art form. Um, and we can't score a movie as it was made in the 30s. Um, we don't dress the same. We, don't, we wear sneakers now, you see. Uh, so it, 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 you know, it's, it's a matter of um, trying to find from what the previous composers have invented a way through where you you know you you take the rope that they're, they're giving you and and you try to pull a, a little thread a bit further down the down the road um, and in the 70s for example the, the, the scoring has changed a lot uh, first because in the 60s the nouvelle vague gave another um, idea of how music could, could be in films without following what was on screen, but what was outside of screen. The storyline more than the visual. And But other composers like Bernard Herrmann have shown that they, they were also uh, uh, a way in American cinema to try and, and find something different. And if you look at um, Roman Polanski, Chinatown, for example, scored by Jerry Goldsmith, it's very different from what he did for Basic Instinct. Uh, because Roman Polanski has a very specific way of using music, leaving a lot of space to, to silence and to sound, um, respecting the dialogue, but also respecting the audience, thinking that the audience is you know, educated enough to not be fed well, congratulations on the success of this movie, which has made $872 million worldwide. Not bad. Yeah, I didn't produce it. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.